It's Friday here on the Market Day Report. I'm John Jenkinson. Thank you very much for spending part of your day with us. We had some overnight sales last night. In fact, I shouldn't say some, quite a few overnight sales. The biggest run of overnight sales we've seen in quite some time. 257,000 metric ton of soybeans to China. 134,503 metric ton of corn to Costa Rica. Uh, 130,000 metric ton of wheat to unknown destinations and 126,000 metric ton of soybeans also to unknown destinations. To get analysis on all this, let's uh, visit with Scott Geekus with Longleaf Trading. And uh, he joins us now from New York. And Scott, thank you very much. Uh, kind, of a, kind of a big batch of sales here overnight. Yeah, those those sale numbers were very surprising. Uh, you're still seeing you know strong demand, especially from China, just across the board. You know, wheat, soybeans, as well as the corn too. So you know, one of the things that stand out with the the soybean market was you know the Ukraine. They violated those procedures with the WTO. That's sparking a little bit of buying pressure into the soybeans. So we'll see how that's going to play out. You know, we're I, we are expecting to see you know a little bit more. Focus on the weather just across the board, as you guys were talking about earlier. But if we can see, you know, the rain holding strong a little bit, you know, precipitation over the weekend, you're going to see some fresh buying coming in, especially with the soybean market. All right. And speaking of the soybean market, Scott, we've got that uh, crush report that's going to be out here oh, in about 15 minutes or so. Uh, and uh, sounds like the trade might be looking for a record number here. Yeah, and that has been the case, you know, that is what it is going to be expected. So we'll see how it comes out. You know, if there is a surprise not as well as expected, you're going to see a slight sell-off. So we'll see. We, you now, quite, uh, quite a pullback also in the meal market today also after that big run-up that we had. Yeah, I think that was just more of, you know, people taking profits rather than just fresh selling or and coming in with that. Recently, we've seen a little bit of a, of a bounce, I guess, as what we would call it. Uh, I've, I've heard some uh, fellow traders uh, also talk about that. Uh, so this, this grain market, what's this doing for the charts as we see the, the corn and in wheat particular take this little bit of a, a little bit of a lift? Yeah, well, that's good that we're seeing some fresh buying. It could be some short covering going into the weekend. Um, I don't think it's fresh buying just yet. I think it's going to be, you know, the fresh buying is going to come in and see how the weather is going to be playing out over the weekend. All right. Uh, hang on here with us, Scott. We're going to check the futures real quick. And when we come back, I want to get your thoughts on this uh, cattle market and the hog market. So right now to the corn market we go. March corn is down three quarters at 347 and three quarters. May corn down a half at 356 and a quarter. And July corn is down three quarters at 364 and a quarter. January soybeans up one and a quarter at 969. March soybeans up one and a quarter at 980. This is a market that was about three cents higher last night. May up one and a quarter at 991. March Chicago wheat, that's the new nearby contract, by the way, up a half, 418 and three quarters. The new crop July contract is up a quarter at 443 and three quarters. But just for reference, that September and December contract are lower by about a quarter and a half a penny, respectively. Then on over to the Kansas City wheat market, March is up a quarter at 418 and a half, May down a quarter, 431. July wheat down a quarter at 447 and a quarter. March Minneapolis wheat up two and three quarters at 619 and three quarters, May up three and a quarter. And July Minneapolis wheat up three and three quarters at 632 and a half. And nearby March cotton taking another big run here today up 141 at 7674. May cotton up 105 at 7668. And be sure and stay tuned because we'll be back with analysis and a check of all of the numbers of the livestock trade. Tur straight ahead here on the Market Day Report. is here with us. He is with Longleaf Trading. In fact, he's at the CME Group, but in, uh, he's at the office in New York today. Scott, thank you very much for making time and visiting with us here today. All right, uh, let's get into this livestock market. Uh, first, let's talk about the hogs. We're going to go with the hogs first this time. One of the interesting things that's been uh, developing here is this big drop in uh, some of the pork product market. And um, in particular, you refer to what's been going on in that belly market. You know, it was, uh, what was it, a week ago? 
ago, week and a half ago, we were trading in the 140s. Now we're trading uh, pretty uh, pretty light here in the 108s. So a big drop. Um, what uh, where do you what do you think this market is trying to tell us here? Yeah, uh, after you know the cutoff values coming out yesterday, and you've seen a wild ride yesterday, you know, huge range between you know 68.70 to 66.25. You know, 65 is going to be a major support for the hog market. So we're going to see how that plays out. But you know, other than breaking out of that range, I don't see any direction with confidence one way or the other. But the cutoff values is definitely what sparked that wild ride yesterday. Is the trade paying very much attention to these hog weights, these slaughter weights? Yeah, the slaughter weights, you know, they continue to come in a little bit higher. The weights haven't been, you know, they're higher than average, but they're not increasing. And I think uh, the, one of the numbers that came out today, they were drop, they dropped by a pound or so from last week. So that's really not that big of a difference. But the weights are still high, supply still there, so that's why you're seeing more of a downward pressure. All right. The uh, cattle market still has yet to develop here, Scott, but the futures are going to be paying pretty close attention to this. Uh, we talked to one uh, one uh, uh, commenter uh, com uh, talked to somebody that had a comment earlier uh, that uh, said we're starting to see maybe some of these asking prices firm at 120 for cash in the south. Yeah, uh, you know, the, with the cattle market, you know, the production is still, you know, in supply con uh, concerns as well. You know, higher higher production, supply, backups. You know, I read something uh, right before I came in saying that, you know, just the grocery stores are, you know, preparing for just a, a weaker, you know, demand then for, for uh, you know, the products going into the holidays, which is a little surprising to me. Yeah. Scott Geek is here with us with Longleaf Trading from the uh, New York office of the CME Group. Scott, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. All right. Let's take a look at this uh, live cattle market, feeder cattle market, and...